Back in episode seven, I spoke with my friend Brenda Stewart on an episode entitled, Your Labels Don't Define You. It was one of the most popular episodes I've aired so far, and if you haven't listened to it yet, I highly encourage you to go back and hear that one. Toward the end of that episode, we mentioned that we were going to plan a fall event. Well, we've been working behind the scenes, and we've brought Ann Simmons on board with us. Today, I'm so excited to talk with both of them. We're going to talk about what is trauma. It's a buzzword we hear all the time. How has trauma impacted your life? And when is it time to seek help? And then we're going to share details on the Hope Restored Trauma Intensive that we are planning for September 21st to 24th in Oviedo, Florida. I hope that as you listen to this episode, you are encouraged. Maybe you'll find some answers to things that you have been questioning in your own life. And maybe you'll find that the Hope Restored Trauma Intensive would be beneficial to you. Hi, friend. You're listening to Find Hope Here. I'm your host, Teresa Whiting, author, speaker, ministry leader, friend, and fellow struggler. This is a podcast about the messy, complicated, painful parts of life, but also the beautiful, joy-filled hope that Jesus promises. Each week, we dig deep into God's Word together and talk about how His truth impacts our everyday lives. I'm not going to ask you to sit with me and have coffee because I seem to have my best conversations while I'm just doing life. So I'd love to hang out with you as you walk or fold laundry or drive to work. You're invited to join me in pursuing the hope God promises. No matter where you are or where you've been, I pray you always find hope here. Let's jump in to today's episode. Well, today I'm joined by my two friends, Brenda and Anne, and they are licensed trauma therapists. And ladies, I'm going to get let you introduce yourselves. So tell our listeners your name, your experience and background, and what led you to become a trauma therapist. So Brenda, why don't you go first? Sure. It's so great to be here with you today, um, Teresa and Anne. My name is Brenda Stewart, and I am a licensed mental health counselor in Florida and a licensed professional counselor in the state of Louisiana. I have a small group therapy practice in the Orlando, Florida area, and then I also see clients online throughout Florida and Louisiana. I received my master's in clinical mental health counseling from Regent University and really focus on a specialization in clients healing from trauma, anxiety, and eating disorders. Part of what led me to really have an interest in specializing in trauma was my own healing journey. I experienced trauma as a child and also in my early 20s. And through my own healing process with a therapist, um, actually a few different therapists, um, I really became passionate about walking alongside others as they heal and holding out hope, providing a safe space, being a safe person, because I truly believe that healing is possible. And so I did a career change, went back to grad school, and here I am. And I can testify personally um, that you are a person who holds out hope because I know you and I've known you over the years. And I have always found that to be true when we even have personal conversations. I just feel like I've seen that in your life. So, And Mm -hmm. Anne, I'm just getting to know Anne, so I'm excited to hear from you. Um, Tell us about your experience and background and what, what led you to become a trauma therapist. Sure. Thanks for having me, Teresa. This is a lot of fun uh, to get to have this conversation with you and Brenda. Uh, I am a licensed clinical social worker in the state of Florida and a licensed independent social worker in clinical practice in the state of South Carolina. And I'm certified in EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, as well as constructed awareness, which is a newer model of therapy that has really enriched um, my clients' experience as they bring awareness to their own experiences. Uh, But my background, I received my bachelor's in human services at Southern Wesleyan University here in South Carolina. And then I immediately went into the social work program at the University of South Carolina. 
and I've been in clinical practice for the last five years, and I currently own a group practice here in Greenville, South Carolina. It's called Upstate Restorative Counseling. Mm -hmm. So uh, the story behind me becoming a trauma therapist really, I think, started in grad school uh, because I was really drawn to uh, the attachment theory. I don't know how familiar you are with that, but, you know, it really looks at how our first relationships in life um, with our parents in particular uh, impact the lens that we see the world through. So I went to school later in life and had three kids of my own. So it just all kind of resonated with me as I was reading it and and learning about all of that. But as I uh, started working with clients in my office, Many of them had depression and anxiety, a lot of interpersonal relationship issues. And as we began to explore their history, a lot of trauma, attachment trauma, developmental trauma, those types of things started to show up. Mm. And it was then that I realized that talk therapy alone wasn't working to help people really heal and progress and resolve the issues that they were coming in with. So that's when I started getting trained in EMDR. Uh, like I said, found about I found out about uh, constructed awareness, and these two kind of experiential types of therapy has really helped help clients heal. And I've seen some great things in my office using both of those modalities. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about those modalities and what what they entail? Not not a lengthy explanation, but just like sure. a little summary of what they are. So EMDR is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing and was created by Francine Shapiro. I think it was back in the 80s. Brenda, correct Mm -hmm. me if I've got that wrong. And that's right. Yeah, she was walking through the woods one day and she was thinking about a really hard memory that she had, a traumatic experience and noticed her eyes were moving back and forth and realized at the end of her walk, she was feeling better. So that kind of springboarded her into doing a bunch of research into that. And that we can, she, she has, is one of the most researched therapies out there and uh, most effective ones in really all different areas. So it uses bilateral stimulation to work, work through a memory that is kind of stuck, mm. uh, hasn't been processed completely. And when a client goes through that, they typically will get to the other side of it and feel much better. Mm. And then with constructed awareness, um, that one was created by Tyler Orr, and that has that one is based on three principles. Uh, the first principle, bringing simply bringing awareness to our experience, can change it. Uh, we have we all experience the world through three different building blocks: sensations, our thoughts, and then our external senses. And then uh, we're all oriented toward one more than another. So when we start kind of digging into that and doing resourcing around that, uh, it really helps a client to understand how they relate to the world. Okay. And that just you kind of coupling them t- together with EMDR and constructed awareness has really provided clients a uh, a richer processing experience. That sounds so fascinating to me. So, Teresa, I know you recently have a Bible study published called Grace, which is so exciting. And I've already begun it and have shared it with clients myself. And it's amazing. Um, But I'm really curious to hear your passion behind Grace and what led you to writing the Bible study. Well, I've always loved teaching the Bible. I've always dreamed of writing Bible studies. And as I prepared to write this study, I actually had written a very generic study. Um, I guess as I prepared to publish it, I felt like God was really guiding and directing me to be more specific about sexual brokenness um, because Mm -hmm. that's my story. And Mm -hmm. it's the story of so many women in the world and so many women in scripture. And so Mm -hmm. um, I kind of pivoted the study And I think my heart is just to help women understand that they're not alone, that they don't need to live in shame, that God restores and redeems people in their broken stories, whether it be sexual or otherwise, like he, he uses broken people all the time. And so Mm -hmm. 
I think my passion was just to get people to experience God's heart and understand like, oh, wait, like he loves me and he has grace for me and he can still use me. And, um, and I think that was the heart behind writing that study. And there's more in the pipeline, but that was the first one oh, that that's awesome. I felt like needed to come out. I love that. And I'm excited to hear there's more in the pipeline. I think the spiritual impact of sexual trauma is so deep. And a lot of times I hear clients who are questioning, you know, where was God? Why did he allow this to happen? And to have a resource to help them heal spiritually is so needed. So I love that you stepped into your writing and provided a resource I can use. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks. I'm excited that you're sharing it. Um, Before we jump into details about the trauma intensive, I want to just talk a little bit more about um, trauma itself. Like it's a buzzword. I hear that word Mm -hmm. all the time. I see people talking about it. So I would like you to, to maybe share what is trauma? And I've also heard, you know, there's big T trauma and little T trauma and what's the difference. And then Finally, when do you know it's time to see a therapist? Because when I hear about trauma, I feel like we all need, we've all experienced it to one degree. So when do you get to the point of like, oh, I need some help here. So, Anne, do you want to go first on this one? Sure, sure. Happy to. So, you know, I think right now trauma really is a big buzzword and people are using it to just describe things that have happened to them that might just be shocking or distressing, but it's not really the true meaning of what trauma is. And I also feel like, you know, social media has not helped this with things like TikTok and people are getting on there and doing their short little videos about, you know, their experiences, which is fine. But, you know, are we looking at who is providing this information? Is it somebody mm-hmm. who's trained? Is it somebody who's knowledgeable about it? So I think anytime the social media is taking off with something like that, it quickly <laughs> becomes a buzzword. But, you know, as far as the definition of trauma goes, and we could get into a lot of technicalities about what it is, but really just to try to put it in layman's terms, you know, it's, it's when somebody experiences something, it's, you know, I don't know if we want to get into the difference of a big T trauma or a little T trauma, because the response is really what we're interested in is how the person is responding to it. Um, so, but they get stuck in that moment in time after they have this experience and it starts to impact their life in a major way. It interrupts and shows up in relationships. It might, you know, they might not be sleeping. They may have a hard time getting up in the morning and going to work and just the daily functioning can be challenging. They might get, uh, not to use another, I guess, another buzzword in some ways, but triggered where they might get activated or feel like something really catches them off guard and they don't really understand why that's happening. So, um, you know, so that trauma presents itself in those kinds of ways. And sometimes it can be really subtle if it's been a trauma that somebody's lived with for a long time and they don't really understand why they're responding the way they are to things. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes they do know the incident and they know why and the connection, but they just don't understand why am I having these big responses to this thing that seem kind of irrational, out of character, that type of thing. So I think when you start to notice that this is coming up on a regular basis, your life is being kind of, in a way taken over by something like this, you're having a hard time at work, you're having a hard time at home, you're having a difficult time in your relationships, uh, that's a good time to go see a therapist. Mm. Okay. Brenda, do you have anything to add to that? Sure. I, you know, agree with what Anne is saying. And I think the buzzword of trauma, it definitely has become a buzzword. And I think people use that word to really describe anything that is shocking or distressing or even slightly uncomfortable. It's become a way to describe an experience because sometimes people might feel misunderstood or unheard if they say, oh, that was uncomfortable or that was distressing to me. But if the word trauma is used, it has a greater chance of being heard. Mm. And so the desire to be seen, understood, and, um, 
really validated has become coupled with this word trauma. However, I see it used inappropriately a lot of times. Um, and it's become overgeneralized mm-hmm. because really someone, two people can go through the same event that an outsider might say is traumatic. One person might be traumatized and the other person might not be. And so it really, if we look at trauma as anything that overwhelms the person's ability to cope at that given time, overwhelms the nervous system, if that's what trauma is, then someone, let's say, can have a locker fall on them in elementary school and they feel like they're not going to survive. There's nobody to help. They're alone in that. They might be traumatized by that because of the interpretation, lack of support, and how it impacted their nervous system. Someone else might have a locker fall on them and be like, oh, yeah, I know someone's going to find me. Someone's going to come help. I just need to, you know, yell out or wait till someone finds me. Someone finds them, gets the locker off, and then they move forward in life. It wasn't traumatizing. Mm. And so there's a big difference between the two. And I think big T, little t trauma, I tend to not utilize those terms with clients. Um, Some therapists do, and there's nothing wrong with it. But big T trauma is what people think of, like surviving an earthquake or a sexual trauma or witnessing a murder or these huge events that the population at large would say, oh, that's traumatic or that's a trauma. Little t trauma or small t trauma is more talked about with situations that are overwhelming. They might be smaller in size or other people might not see them as trauma. Um, Things like maybe emotional manipulation or emotional abuse or um, being neglected or you know sexual harassment in the in the workplace that's sort of undercover Mm. right but what we know is that it, it can be just as damaging um it can have a similar negative effect on the person because it's really about that individual's response and so when clients come in and they talk about their experience i don't specify if this is a big T or little T trauma, because somebody who has multiple little T traumas, according to the definition, might be more impacted than somebody who Mm. survived an earthquake, right? But if we call them little T or small T traumas, it gets into a comparison um, Mm. a lot of time between traumas, which is never helpful. And it also can feel very invalidating to the person. So I'm just trying to clarify, because what I think I hear you saying is that Trauma isn't necessarily the event that happens to you. It's what Mm -hmm. happens to your nervous system or how you handle that event that determines whether or not it's trauma. Correct. So when it's traumatizing, we know it impacts a person's thoughts and beliefs about themselves, other people, the world at large, relationships. It shifts the nervous system. Um, It affects the physical body the mental, emotional aspect, uh, the spiritual aspect, the relational aspect of a person. Okay. So tell us, um, how does an intensive differ from going to therapy, you know, on a regular basis or an ongoing basis and kind of who would, who would an intensive be for? Like what person would this be geared toward? Well, there's a couple different forms of intensive. So both Anne and I are EMDR therapists and we offer EMDR intensives, which is more of, you know, someone can choose between a couple hours, one day a week, a couple hours, three days a week, or a day long EMDR intensive. The intensive we're offering um, together is a weekend, right? So mm-hmm. clients come in on a Thursday, stay overnight. Um, it will end on Sunday. And I think the difference, one of the main difference is in the intensive we're offering is it allows people to separate from the daily life responsibilities and distractions that can come and really have a focused time to process what they've gone through. And also being in community with each other. We know that a lot of trauma, the impact of trauma can bring about shame for a person. And one of the anecdotes to shame is 
vulnerability with safe people. Mm -hmm. And so by coming together in community and so often clients that I work with who experience trauma are so lonely, feel isolated and alone in the journey. And so this allows people to come together in a safe environment with the three of us there um, and really delve into healing that weekend. I love that. I think that's so important that you said um, being in community in a safe place. And I think that's mm-hmm. the goal of all of us mm-hmm. is to create a safe space for people to process, to share their stories, to kind of walk through healing um, mm-hmm. with with other people who get it, who know and who know. Okay. I'm, And also that validation of I'm not the only one. Yes. It also allows people to have a a more accurate mirror held up. And what I mean by that is when we experience trauma and it impacts the way we view ourselves, relationships, the world at large, right? We think that that mirror is truth. It feels like the truth. So if the mirror is, I should have known better, right? That's the message that's heard then a person can be really highly critical of themselves, be stuck in a self-defeating, self-contempt cycle because it feels 100% true. But when other people can reflect something different outside of just the therapist, right? Of, oh no, there was nothing you could have done different or there was no way you could have known that. Like looking back is 2020, right? Right. But there was no way you could have been prepared or known that. It starts to begin to shift that felt response to something different. Like, oh, maybe that belief is a trauma-based belief and not actual truth. I think sometimes two people just need to hear someone say to them that it wasn't okay that this happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they, I think sometimes we take on so much of the responsibility of whatever the experience is, you know, that we feel like, oh, I should have done more. I should have done this. I should have done that. And, you know, just hearing somebody say that that wasn't okay. And that wasn't Mm -hmm. your fault. Mm -hmm. That can be a huge moment for somebody who is really working through uh, a hard experience like this. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that would be really helpful. So who would be a perfect candidate for this intensive who as people are listening and they're thinking, is this for me, you know, help people to determine whether or not this is for them, or maybe it's for somebody that they know. Um, Well, this intensive is for women ages 18 and above. Uh, So if you're an adult woman, it would be one foundational qualification for if you're appropriate for the intensive. (laughs) Um, But if you're considering it, if you're thinking about it, I think if you've experienced a highly distressing event that continues to affect you today, if you've been in individual therapy and you're just longing for something more, or you feel like you're stuck a little bit in the process, um, if you feel like you try to do this therapy work, but you're so busy with life and there's so many distractions that it's hard to kind of hold the hold the work you're doing in therapy from a week to week basis an intensive would be great. And then I think Mm -hmm. some of the symptoms that people might experience who would be, you know, great coming to this intensive is if you find yourself really anxious, a lot of the time, if you're experiencing flashbacks, meaning images or sensations from past events continue to affect you. If you find you have like a high startle response and you feel on edge, Or if you just feel sort of discouraged and hopeless, like I've been in therapy, I, this happened a long time ago, why is it still affecting me now? I think that would be great. Or somebody who just has overwhelming feelings of shame or guilt or um, even anger around past events. We know Mm -hmm. that trauma will play out in the present until it's resolved. And so if somebody has experienced anything that has overwhelmed their nervous system at any given point in time. I think this trauma, this trauma intensive could be amazing. And that's a lot of people, the things that you were describing, I was thinking that's most people I feel Mm -hmm. like have one of those Mm -hmm. issues that they have to deal Mm -hmm. with. So this is not an exclusive, like you have Mm -hmm. had to have been through this 
thing to come to Correct. This. Correct. And it's really key that we don't compare traumas. Mm. Um, if you've experienced something and you're struggling with the impact of it, this is for you. And we will honor what you've walked through and listen and guide you through the process. And I think it's gonna be a really great time. The other thing is a lot of people are like, oh, I don't do well in groups or I don't know if I'm appropriate for this, right? Fear is an obstacle mm. that can stand in the way of true healing. And so I would encourage people who might be interested but are afraid or think, I don't know, to reach out to any of us, uh, you, Teresa, and or myself. We can talk through it before they apply if they want to, um, if they have questions about if it's right for them. You know, we're open. I think that's so so good that you mentioned that. And I, I wanted to mention another obstacle that I could see already um, people thinking, well, I don't have time or money, or it's not worth it for me to take that time for myself. Help help somebody who's thinking that way to, to come at it maybe from a different angle. Yes. I think, you know, one of the first things I think is important to to say to somebody is that we hear them you know, we mm -hmm. hear you. It is hard. It's challenging to take time for ourselves, especially as women, because we're juggling so many different things all the time. Uh, and we usually put ourselves at that bot at the bottom of that priority list. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's important for them to see that, you know, that they matter and that this opportunity is a chance for them to really step away from the demands of their life and really be able to enter into a space where they can focus on themselves for a while. Mm -hmm. And that's really a gift because we don't get that opportunity very often. And it certainly doesn't happen when you're sitting at home and you have laundry waiting and dishes in the sink and <laughs> children who want to be fed or animals who need to be taken care of. Um, but, you know, it's, we've seen the space it's a beautiful space where we're going to be having this intensive and you know i feel like it will really give somebody an opportunity to to step away and to work on what they need to work on and hear from god and what he has for them and for mm -hmm. him to remind them how he sees them mm -hmm. i was just going to add one more thing to that is with the question i don't have time for this or i don't know you know if i can spend that money. My question sometimes is, can you afford not to? Yeah, it's a good question. Right. Can you afford not to? We know that, you know, the impact of trauma can down the road cause health issues if it's not resolved. Um, research supports that it can destroy relationships or cause relationships to be more difficult. Right. Um, and it can stand in the way of you really fulfilling what God has called you to do, who he's created you to be. So the question is, it might seem a lot at the beginning if you haven't experienced one before. Once you experience one, I think you'll say, oh, it's so worth it. Mm -hmm. I want to do another one. Um, so my question would be, can you afford not to? That's a great question. That's powerful. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what they will experience while they're there. Sure. We have an amazing schedule set up. Um, as Ann mentioned, we have seen and toured the property. It's a 20 on 20 acres, a beautiful home. Um, it feels peaceful. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels like you can have some ser serenity, some solace while you're there. Um, there's horses on the property. There's, a bunch of chickens. I'm not a fan of chickens. They kind of freak me out because I feel like they're going to peck me at every turn, <laughs> but they're behind a gate. We don't have to take care of them. Um, all their meals will be covered. Um, we'll have nutritious meals. We have a schedule that in involves experiential therapies. They'll get individual therapy as well as group therapy, um, group EMDR therapy, some constricted awareness as Anne was mentioning before. We're also going to do a lot of creative elements. Um, so different artwork, different, you don't have to be an artist to come. I know that's mm -hmm. probably someone's thought. <laughs> um, 
some different hands-on, very tangible pieces. And in everything that we do, our heart is to communicate value, to communicate that you are important, you matter, you are worth healing. And so that is our heart behind it all. And and you can jump in with some additional things they'll receive or get at the intensive. I think you covered the list quite well, Brenda. Uh, I think too, you know, it's important to, to mention the time away as being restful Mm -hmm. and where they don't have to worry about what are we eating? When are we eating? Do I have to clean up? You know, we're going to take care of all of that for them. So, uh, so you don't have to worry about that. We'll have snacks. We have all that stuff, but then also time alone to do Mm -hmm. some of their own work, their own processing, whether it's journaling or walking around the property. I think there's a pond. Mm-hmm. On the property as well that they could mm-hmm. go, you know, go sit and, you know, so, so there's a lot of different opportunities when they're there too, mm-hmm. to just have some, uh, some time to themselves mm-hmm. if needed. Plus then the fun of just being with a group of other ladies. And yeah. We're going to incorporate yes. laughter too. Yes. It's not yeah. all going to be heavy. Right. Right. Exactly. Uh, there's also a beautiful barn where we'll be able to do some of the activities and I, I just feel like the setting itself lends itself to peace and healing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. And the barn is air conditioned. So if you're thinking it's September in Florida, we're going to be sweating out there. It's like, it's a wedding venue. So it's yes. a nice barn <laughs> that's air conditioned. Um, and also one thing I didn't mention is that we're going to provide a notebook in advance for people who are signed up with some activities, some journal prompts that they can um, begin preparing in advance for the weekend if they choose to. That is going to be so helpful. I think sometimes you come into a weekend and you just don't know what to expect. So having that preparation ahead of time even gets your head kind of prepared and your heart prepared Mm -hmm. for the work that you're going to be doing. And I keep saying the word work, but like you said, it will be fun as well. And it'll be healing and it'll be life-giving. It's not going to be, you know, just a bunch of work. Yeah. Teresa, could you, uh, could you tell us then what your part of the intensive weekend is going to be? Sure. I am not a licensed therapist, um, but I'm a Bible teacher. And one thing I love about this intensive is that we, we all believe that there are a lot of elements when it comes to healing. There is the spiritual component, the mental, the relational. You know, you and Brenda are going to bring a therapeutic and an experiential kind of um, element. I'll be bringing biblical teaching. So Mm -hmm. I'll be teaching several sessions on the people in scripture that experience trauma. And there's a lot of them (laughs) and Mm -hmm. God's heart and the things that God says about who we are and his heart toward us. And so I think I love just the combination that we mm-hmm. are partnering together. We're not saying, oh, the Bible's over here and it it only touches these things and therapy's over here and it only touches these things. We're saying God and his word and therapy and you know his special revelation and his general revelation all work together to bring healing to people and and we want to include all of those components. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think often that that spiritual component is what's missing in a mm-hmm. lot of what we do therapeutically sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I think it's wonderful that you're going to bring that aspect to it. Yeah, I love the, it's a both and, right? The therapy mm-hmm. and the biblical truth and spiritual healing rather than one or the other. It's the integration of the two. Mm-hmm. All right. So you might be listening to this and thinking that you're interested and you want to know more details. So just some of the basic information is this is going to be held September 21st to 24th in Oviedo, Florida. And we're really only 15 minutes from the Orlando airport. So if you can get yourself to Orlando, um, we will get you to the the intensive, um, or you can take an Uber, which would be very easy to do. And um, the price of the event includes the lodging, the meals, the activities, everything. It's all inclusive. Mm-hmm. Really, the only okay. thing that you need to bring if you're coming to the 
intensive is clothes <laughs> and it's going to be casual if you want to wear you know yoga pants or whatever you're comfortable in um there's no expectation so just bring your clothes toiletries we'll have some toiletries for you there um but if you have certain things you like um go ahead and bring those and uh, a notebook or journal something that you can write with process with um and yourself and your bible and, we can and your bible yes yeah or at least yeah. one on the phone, on your phone if you don't want to carry one yeah is there any kind of follow up um you know what will what will people experience after the intensive is over that's a great question um it is important to have follow up after an intensive like this and so one option is that Teresa, I believe you will be offering an online study with Graced, mm -hmm. uh, which will allow the women who attend the intensive to continue that connection they've developed with each other and really continue to process that spiritual healing. And then we encourage clients who come to continue the work that they've started when they go home. What we know is that a trauma intensive will help tremendously and clients can experience a reduction in symptoms and a, a large element of healing, but the work's going to need to continue. It's mm -hmm. not a one and done. Right. And so, um, connecting with a therapist back where you live, if you don't have a therapist, we can assist in finding a therapist that's a good fit for the person. And then, you know, we're going to be offering additional intensives in the future. So, there's more options if they find that the intensive really works well for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do they sign up? Listeners can sign up by going to my website. It is a uh, wellspring therapy associate. So I will have, a link. I will put a link to okay. that in the show notes. So you just click okay. on the link and you'll be able to sign up that way. And also I'll put a, a reminder of the dates and the location and all of that okay. as well. And all the details. Yeah. So there's a page on the website that will go through additional questions, more details about the intensive. And there's a button that says apply and they can click on there and it will take them to a form that asks more detailed questions. And then once we receive that, um, Anne or myself will connect with the person coming and kind of have a phone or zoom conversation to ensure that it's a good fit and um, go from there. And the spot, the place is reserved. Their application is reserved once we have the first payment. And so people can pay in full or we can set up a payment plan uh, to make it more doable. We don't want costs to be prohibitive for people coming. Mm -hmm. And space is limited also. So we, we want to. Yes. Mm -hmm. We, we want to keep it, it at eight to 10 clients um, so that it can really feel like an intimate setting. People can get to know each other and it's not too overwhelming. So space is already being reserved. So sign up sooner rather than later to ensure you have a spot. Yes. Yes. And if you're listening and you're not ready to hit the apply now button, feel free to reach out to Teresa and or myself and our emails, I assume will be in the show notes, but uh, we can talk to you beforehand too. If you're nervous or if you're unsure, we're happy to answer any questions. Right. Right. So what is one thing that you're looking forward to? I absolutely love intensives. So they just sort of light me up. I'm looking forward to meeting with the clients, seeing them experience community with each other, and just the transformational healing work that will take place. Mm -hmm. It's a really powerful and beautiful thing. And I'm just excited for what God is going to do in the lives of the people who are there. Yeah, I have to just ditto what Brenda was saying, because I think for me too, though, seeing the community develop as all these women come together from different parts of the world, different walks of life, and they, uh, they experience this together and the connections that will be made, the healing that will happen. I think that'll be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, I'm looking forward to learning from the two of you because I know that you're <laughs> brilliant and um and I just love your hearts. I love I I'm excited to see um 
kind of the way you work with people. And then I'm also just excited to know that God is at work too, and that he is drawing the women that he wants to be at this retreat and he's preparing their hearts even now. And I'm excited to be a witness to that, to see him bringing healing and bringing hope into people and bringing community where there's loneliness. And so I'm just excited to see, you know, what he has planned. Mm -hmm. So as we wrap up, I'm going to switch gears because I just, I'm a creature of habit and I can't end (laughs) a podcast episode without asking for book recommendations. Um, And they don't have to be trauma related. They could just be (laughs) books. Um, Also, I don't think we even mentioned it's called Hope Restored. That is the name of the trauma intensive is hope restored. We just keep calling it trauma intensive. And I want to add that hope restored part. So yes, um, that is important. So tell us, um, tell me a book rec, whether it's um, fiction, a good summer book, a a therapy book, nonfiction. (laughs) I haven't read a fiction book in ages, so I, (laughs) (laughs) I don't have a good fiction book to recommend, Um, but I have two that I I would suggest. There's one called The Gift of One Day, Mm -hmm. How to Find Hope When Life Gets Hard by Carrie and Chris Shook. And I read this book, I think I read it first time during COVID, and it was just transformational in how I looked at each day. So Mm -hmm. they talk about an experience that their family went through and how really we need to just focus on today not be so worried about tomorrow and talking to God about what we need today. Mm. So that's, that one was amazing. And then I'm currently reading uh, in a pit with a lion on a snowy day by Mm. Mark (laughs) Batterson. So uh, that one is about facing your fears and trusting God and taking advantage of opportunities that we may shy away from initially because of fear. Mm-hmm. And trusting that God is leading us through these things and giving us the strength to do what we need to do. That it's been really, really good so far. That's good. What about you, Brenda? Um, I am currently reading a book called Stuck mm. by <laughs> Terry Walling. And it is about navigating transitions of life and le- leadership. And it's been really a great book uh, from a Christian perspective. Um, he has this book, Stuck, and then there's a trilogy. Uh, that comes in specific times of transitions in life for a believer. And so Stuck and then Awakening is the first of the trilogy. And that's an excellent book too by Terry Walling. The other thing I'm really enjoying is a illustrated journaling edition of the Psalms. Um, It's the Psalms Poetry on Fire. Um, It's the Passion Translation, but it's a journaling edition. And it's just really um, a great thing to you know, pick up, read a Psalms. It has kind of artwork and space for journaling to really allow you to slow down and sit with what you're reading, um, ponder it and really internalize the truth so you can apply it. Those sounds so good. All of them. I'm excited. I haven't read or, or even known about any of those books. So that sounds great. So um, we're, we're out of time and we're going to wrap up. So I just want to thank both of you for taking the time to to kind of share your heart and to share what's going on at this um, Hope Restored Trauma Intensive. And I'm excited. I'm excited for us to, to do this together. Hopefully it will be the first of many. Yes. Thanks for having us, Teresa. Yeah. Thank you, Teresa. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me today on Find Hope Here. To find anything I mentioned on the episode, go to TeresaWhiting.com slash listen That's where you can find all the show notes. And remember to hit that subscribe button. If you want to go the extra mile and leave a review, that would be amazing and it would mean so much to me. I'd like to leave you with this prayer from Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope 